I am going to cook those scallops with dashi. Beautiful, shiny, ivory, and this is a sign of a fresh scallop. Dashi is this magical flavor. So all those ingredients come from Japan, very high quality ingredients. Chef, I think this might be the first scallop I've ever had. You know, like the first real scallop. Hey, good afternoon from snowy Midtown Manhattan. This is Nathan Thornburg from Roads and Kingdoms. This fabulous program we present is entitled The World's Great Ingredients. Top chefs from various countries demonstrate their recipes using Japanese ingredients. We would love to provide you with ideas today on how to incorporate quality Japanese ingredients into your home or professional kitchen. First off, I am so excited to welcome world-renowned chef Eric Repair. He's the chef, co-owner of Le Bernard Den, the three-star Michelin restaurant that was also awarded four stars from our hometown paper, the New York Times, and selected as the world's best restaurant on La Liste. The restaurant is also known for having the world's top seafood dishes. His innovative recipes employ the sensitive touches of choice ingredients from all over the world while keeping that authentic French style. Chef Eric Repair, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nathan. Good afternoon, everyone, actually. Welcome to my demo kitchen at Le Bernardin. I'm very happy to have you. Uh, so good to be here. Yeah, so good to be here with you. We've been looking forward to this for a while. So we know now that the world is in a tough situation and Le Bernardin is no exception. Anything new, any innovations that you are doing to help overcome these challenging times? Sure, so New York, is very challenged because restaurants and hotels are basically closed and it's no indoor dining. Uh, and it has been like that for most of the year. So what we did from May to uh, December, we decided to cook for people who are in need. And we partnered with World Central Kitchen, an organization created by Jose Andres, Chef Jose Andres, and uh, City Harvest, which is in, based in New York, the, is the most uh, important food rescue organization in the world and keeping a very strict protocol, making sure that uh, clients and employees uh, are safe and will be safe. Uh, I appreciate it. It's good to see cooks doing what they do best to help out in these times. Um, all right, let's move on to our next guest from Las Vegas. It is Mr. Ari Castrati, Chief Hospitality Officer of the global hospitality and entertainment company, MGM Resorts International. As CHO of MGM, Mr. Castrati has been in Japan many times with his group's food and beverage procurement staff. He has visited various regions throughout the country where a variety of food products are locally sourced, as well as regional fishing ports where freshly caught seafood is locally auctioned, as we know. During his travels in Japan, he is always on the lookout for local ingredients that have not been yet introduced overseas. Beyond that, Mr. Castrati has also supported the recovery of the Tohoku area. He was promoting the area's distinguished local food to the rest of the world, and he was appointed a Goodwill Ambassador, the Japanese Cuisine Goodwill Ambassador by Japan's Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries in December 2019. Good afternoon, Ari. Good afternoon, Nathan and uh, Chef, and great to be here with you both and the rest of the viewers. Uh, how are you doing in Las Vegas today? We're doing good here. Um, um, I'm, I'm happy to be here with Chef Repair and actually go through this, uh, this wonderful presentation. Uh, Las Vegas uh, has, you know, has been challenged uh, through the pandemic, as you can only imagine. Uh, for being a tourist-driven uh, town, we have, uh, we've had our challenges, uh, to say the least. But there's light at the end of the tunnel and there is, uh, there's an absolute focus on, on driving tourism back here. But the first and foremost, we'll focus on the, on the basic measures of health and safety. And um, you know, we've been forced to, you know, to really innovate in a meaningful way to, you know, to provide experiences to our guests uh, and continue to provide exciting experiences in a safe and, uh, uh, safe and um, uh, a real clean environment, if you will. I cannot wait to get back there and start doing those things that only stay in Vegas. All right. Uh, listen, we are going to get started with this cooking demonstration with no delay. Today the dish is uh, using Japanese scallops and dashi. Dashi, which is often translated as Japanese broth, is a family of soup stocks used in Japanese cuisine. Chef Repair, why did you select Japanese scallops for the dish today? 
I actually choose Japanese scallops from Hokkaido. Hokkaido is in the north of Japan and the water is very cold there. It's also a lot of nutrients in the water, a lot of plankton. And the scallops are just not only delicious, but they also in size beautiful. And we receive them in the US very, very fresh, which is obviously uh, very important. I have some scallops to show you right here. Uh, they have this kind of like a beautiful, shiny, ivory, and this is a sign of a fresh scallop. When scallops are not fresh, they do not have that shiny and translucent color and also the consistency. When I touch them, they are firm. This is a sign of quality. The ultimate test to know if your scallops are of high quality to smell them. In the US, the scallops are flat. They Amazing. do not have the wave, so they're not the same. I am going to cook those scallops with uh, dashi. So dashi is one of the staple in Japanese cuisine. So dashi is a broth that is very, very flavorful. When you make a broth and you want to catch flavors, it's very difficult to do so because uh, liquids do not catch flavor because they're not rich. What you want to do in the beginning is to have some kelp. The kelp is simmering right here. I'm going to show you some dry kelp. So they come from Hokkaido as well. Then you put them in water. You let it simmer in water until the kelp is very, very soft. If the temperature is too hot, you will not have the right flavor. When the kelp becomes soft, and I'm going to show you right here, you see the kelp is basically cooked slowly and it, gives, it released all this flavor. So I'm going to remove the kelp and put it here. Uh, add some flavors to the dashi. We are going to use some nori. I have a sheet of nori here. It's basically a seaweed as well. Right now it's good, but we are going to toast it. So you have many ways to do it. I do it in a pan, dry pan. We are going to make sure it doesn't burn, but it will give this kind of a roasted, toasted flavor. I have also some um, dry bonito. And the dry bonito, it's shavings of Bonito, which is a cousin of the tuna, that has been shaved very, very thinly. And we are going to also add it to the, to the broth. That will bring a little bit of smokiness. It will bring also a little bit of meatiness to the broth. And it's, it's important. Uh, depending on um, the shaving of the Bonito, you may have like more meaty and, and strong flavors or more delicate flavors. Here, because we are looking at cooking a, a seafood scallop, I want to have something that is very subtle and that will not overpower the qualities of the scallop, which are very sweet. Um, it's a quality of, of the scallop. The texture is firm, but they, they're not only sweet, they also have uh, a lot of complexity in, in them, uh, exactly like any white fish. The nori right here is changing shape, is changing form. I'm going to put now, while it's almost ready, I'm going to put about a full cup of those bonito flakes in the dashi. And I'm going to break it like this, add it to the broth. And now we have the water that was the liquid uh, cooking the kelp or the kombu. We have the bonito flakes in it and we have the toasted nori. And this is going to steep for about at least five minutes. And then at the end, I will use some white soy sauce. If you cannot find white soy sauce, you can use dark soy sauce, but the white soy sauce is a little bit more delicate for this kind of preparation. I'm tasting. I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with it. <laughs> we are going to um, put a little bit of heat to cook the scallops. So the scallops, I'm gonna season them with a bit of salt and pepper. And what I don't want to do, I'm going to use three scallops because I'm cooking basically just for you right here. Some salt and pepper on top of each scallop like that on both sides, which is very important. I like to put them on the side and roll them in a pan like that. We are going to use a little bit of vegetable oil like that. The pan is very hot. I see the smoke coming. So I'm putting my scallops like this. You see, like that. I'm going to lower the heat a little bit. I do not wish to have too much um, color on it. So I'm rolling them. You can see I'm rolling the scallops like that. What is very important is not to overcook your scallops. Scallops overcooked become dry. While they're cooking, I think I'm going to filter some of the dashi. 
that is ready now because we are going to need it in a few seconds. We are going to lower again the temperature. We don't want to go too high. Now, that broth here is, I'm sure, delicious, but again, it needs something else and the soy sauce will bring it. So we have the white soy sauce. I'm pouring it on the side. You never put the soy sauce on the beginning. You put the soy sauce at the very end. I'm going to test the broth again. It's very important. And now I'm happy with it. It's not too salty, but it has, it has a little bit of that umami flavor coming also from the soy sauce. So we're using some sushi rice, which is very important. Sushi rice usually is a short grain rice like this. Uh, you need to wash the rice until the water is clear. I'm going to open the steamer. The rice is a bit sticky, so I'm taking a little bit of it like that. Put it in a bowl. I'm keeping an eye on my scallops here. Rolling them like this. So I'm going to put them here. And as you can see, they caramelize a little bit here on the side, but not too much. It's not like completely brown. It's not too sweet again. For the seasoning, I have some nori that is going in it. Umebuchi. So umebuchi is a pickle plum that is uh, preserved. And we chopped it and we're adding it to the rice now. I'm also adding some uh, rice seasoning, furiraki, of course the wasabi. Wasabi is very spicy, very pungent. It has a green color. When you make the paste, the color is like this. This one comes from Hokkaido. So we're going to put a little bit of the wasabi. We are going to add the yuzu in it. So yuzu juice is typically only found in Japan. It has a very, very distinctive flavor, very refined flavor. And I'm going to add also a little bit of dashi just a tiny bit of dashi to give some flavor to the rice. So my rice will be warm. The scallops are hot. I'm mixing with a, a, the spatula like that pretty well to make sure that all the ingredients come together and the rice is nicely seasoned. Now I'm going to test it. It's good. I'm going to put a little bit of salt like that and we are ready to plate in a second. So I have a plate and a ring mold and the rice goes inside like this. So all those ingredients come from Japan, very high quality ingredients. It inspires us actually at Le Bernardin to cook with it and sometimes mix it with Westerners ingredients. Very often, like this dish, for instance, is so delicious, we decided to just use Japanese ingredients and make the dish. I'm going to slice the scallops with a very nice you see the texture, it's not too cooked. Because I cooked it on the outside, it's basically warm and cooked in the inside. But again, they're not dry, they're very moist. Now I'm going to plate the scallops on top of the rice, like this. I have some uh, sliced Japanese cucumber. The Japanese cucumber, they have the quality of being small in size, and also they don't have too many seeds. And it's a very nice ingredient as well. So I'm going to add that. It will add some crunch and also some color to the dish. So I'm making another rosas on top like this. I have some scallions. I'm putting the scallions like this. A little bit of the rice seasoning on top like this of the scallops. The dashi goes in a plate. So the spice is called furikaki. If you're looking for it, it's um, rice seasoning. The dashi has a golden, beautiful color now. It's a beautiful broth. It's going around the scallop. And the dish is ready. So we have the scallops with yuzu wasabi rice and dashi. Uh, this is a ridiculous gig that that is my, uh, my lot in life. Thank you so much for cooking that, Chef. Um, you know, one thing that stands out watching you prepare this dish is this kind of very classic Le Bernardin centralizing the ingredient, right? Letting the actual seafood speak for itself. So I want to talk about that seafood for a moment with Ari, if I can. So Ari, what is so special about Hokkaido scallops in general? Well, thank you for that question. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really hungry right now, just looking at that, at that uh, gorgeous presentation and the gorgeous quality of the, of the scallops and the rest of the ingredients. But let me back up for a second. Uh, there are about 300 types of scallops in the world. And 
and um, Chef showed a sample of what a Hokkaido scallop uh, really looks like. Uh, the famed scallop that Chef is using is coming from Hokkaido, uh, but there are other regions as well that produce really high quality scallops, but primarily obviously from the north. Another region there would be scallops from Aomori. These are really high quality products. It is as a nature of the currents that come from the northern part of Japan. They're really strong and really cold, and, and they produce obviously really cool and clear water. So they essentially basically push the salt right into the shell of the scallop that produces that really beautiful firm flesh that, that Chef mentioned and articulated earlier in his presentation. I mean, I guess when you're talking about these scallops, they have a certain seasonality to them as, as well. Chef Repair, when is the best season for scallops in the world? I believe that the month of uh, December to March are the best months because the water is at the coldest and the scallops have this kind of texture. They are also fed during the summer, so they are very rich uh, and, and they release all their best flavors during the winter. All right, so we've got those, those big in Japan winter scallops. Uh, the other thing, of course, it was the, the highlight of the dish, uh, Ari, was dashi. Can you tell me a little bit about what dashi is and how it features in Japanese cuisine? Dashi is this magical flavor that creates this incredible flavor called umami. Dashi is foundational and it's one of the fundamental ingredients in Japanese cuisine. As articulated by the chef, it's, it's made you know, primarily with a base uh, of kelp and or kombu in that, this particular case. And of course, uh, one of the key ingredients and one of the most uh, incredible ingredients would be the bonito flakes that, that add that complexity and that sophistication of flavor. Uh, and of course, if you want to add some earthiness to it, you add mushrooms. But dashi is made differently in different parts of Japan. And it appears in many, many dishes and many different forms of dishes in Japanese cuisine. You know, we've talked about umami, which is, you know, an important word. And what, what does that really mean? Umami is, is the secret sauce, essentially, inside the dashi. And it's a savory flavor that uh, permeates through this incredible Japanese food culture that we all deeply love. Uh, Chef, you could make this dish essentially with other ingredients. Uh, what, what, are, what are some of the things that you could swap out? Sure, so if you don't have scallops, you can, you can use sea bream, for instance. Uh, you can use uh, crab, actually. Uh, it, it goes really well with that recipe as well. Any kind of seafood that is not very fatty or oily, like if you use um, a tuna, it may be, or, or amachi, it may be a bit too rich because the rice is f fairly rich uh, by, by its consistency. So you need something that is pretty lean. The scallop is very lean, sea bream is lean, um, and again, crab will go really well as, as well. All right, uh, so here we all are in lockdown and, and uh, not able to travel yet, but tell me what is on the next Japan trip as soon as we can all get out there. I will start with you, Ari. I've, uh, I've had the pleasure of, of traveling uh, in many, many uh, places in Japan over the years, and I look forward to going and having my first bowl of ramen. And anything that has essentially the umami flavor that represents Japan to its fullest. Amazing. What about you, Chef? I, I guess dashi kind of plays a role in a lot of different dishes. Is there something that stands out for you? Yes, I will definitely start my day with a nice bowl of miso soup. If I can have a uh, shaman mushi, which is basically like a custard made with dashi and egg, uh, cooked delicately in a steam oven or steamed, I will be very happy. The last time I was in Japan, I ended up in Koyasan, which is uh, a big city made of uh, many, many different temples. And I had temple food there and they gave me udon noodle with curry and it was cooked in dashi. That was good. So Ari, you talked about Japanese cuisine as a, an overall concept uh, a few times. The traditional Japanese cuisine has actually been listed as an intangible cultural heritage asset by UNESCO, is that right? That is correct. It was listed in 2013, um, and deservedly so for all of the obvious reasons that we've talked about today. It's amazing to learn about, and I mean, there's so much to learn about Japanese cuisine and Japanese culture, 
uh, for that matter. There's a ton of wisdom that comes from, you know, from that beautiful country. But is, you know, the social custom of handing down generation to generation, there's this idea of, of carrying through the wisdom that you learn over the years and over generations in producing that one perfect ingredient or one perfect dish or one perfect technique is phenomenal. And that's why Japanese cuisine has deservedly earned the right to, to be listed as a UNESCO heritage. Uh, what are some of the other things, you know, I was noticing in your dish, Chef, that you use very strong flavors like wasabi and you used it with caution. What are some other, you know, kind of Japanese flavors, those, those little highlight inducing uh, pieces that you use in your cooking sometimes? Yes, the Japanese flavors sometimes are very strong, sometimes they're very subtle in, in flavor. It's all a, a matter of combining and being cautious about making sure that the ingredients will be uh, in harmony together and potentially enhance the star of the plate. Today the star of the plate was the scallop. So wasabi being very pungent and strong, you make sure that it's going to season the rice and basically tickle your taste buds, but at the same time do not overpower the star of the plate. So it's always about uh, using ingredients, uh, learning about the ingredients, testing all the time. Testing is, is key. You, you, it's how you can really like find the, the right um, dosage of, of those ingredients that are so, so subtle sometimes. Like for instance, um, the nori is very subtle that I have in my hand that has been cut very thinly. But then the cured plum, the pickled plum, this is very, very pungent. So when you put it in your rice, for instance, or if you use it in any type of cooking, it's going to bring a lot of flavor. It's going to be very, very, very strong. You use it just a tiny bit to, to basically like give a punch uh, and, and that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't last. It's just like waking up um, your test birds or something like that. Getting to some questions from, uh, from our, our viewers, what do you think the percentage of this dish that you made is kind of your inventiveness? How much, you know, say of the dashi cues to really traditional ways of, of putting these dishes together? Well, we at Le Bernardin have dashi in many dishes, but also we use dashi again, as a staple, because it's, it's very interesting. It has this very distinctive flavor that um, you cannot find anywhere. Kombu, when it's basically simmering, brings that unique flavor in the world. It's not mushroomy, it's not earthy. It's a combination of mushroom earth and the sea, and it comes together and it's just a miracle. We have recipes at Le Bernardin that are pure dashi, like, like this dish here, where you, um, you are going to taste the dashi with your spoon, but we also use dashi that we add to sauce and other preparations to bring some layers of complexity and again, umami. Somebody from another part of Bernardin has brought me this dish. Um, for all of you at home, the reason why I'm not using ohashi, the reason why I'm using fork instead of uh, chopstick is this is a Le Bernardin hybrid. And I am so excited. Now, now this is getting into trolling territory. Ari, are you watching carefully? I'm now gonna have a bite <laughs> of this amazing dish. I wish I could teleport myself there. And? Chef, I think this might be the first scallop I've ever had. You know, like the first real scallop. How, how incredible. And what you were talking about, that sort of letting the ingredient speak to you, um, you didn't say that it would tell me such gorgeous, sweet nothings. <laughs> that is an incredible dish. Um, Ari. I'm gonna get FedEx on the phone. We're gonna get this thing over to you. I don't know, that's probably not recommended by the chef, but somehow we've gotta get you a taste of that. It's got that, a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of that high tide, you said, uh, that umami. Um, man, I'm really sorry, everybody out there. That was as good as it looked, <laughs> if not better. Uh, any final thoughts from chef or Ari? 
I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I wish I was there in New York with you, but I look forward to having that dish on the menu when I see you next in, uh, in New York, Chef. Thank you very much. I have to say that I felt very privileged and lucky to have those beautiful ingredients. And it brings a lot of pleasure and humility to cook uh, for you, Nathan, uh, right now. And uh, if I have to go to Vegas, Ari, I'll be very happy to cook the same dish. I look forward to welcoming you here, Chef. And uh, I guess if I could add a little bit more about you know today, I'm grateful to be part of this presentation. As you know, as I know that all of us here today are here to respect uh, an incredible culture, an incredible food culture that the Japanese food culture is, uh, as we know it as Washoku. Uh, I'm proud to be part of um, uh, part of the ambassadorship. Uh, beautiful. So again, the dish the chef made for us today were Japanese hotate scallops, wasabi, dashi, all coming together in this fantastic marriage on the plate. I cannot thank you both enough. Everybody stay safe out there and take care. We'll see you at World's Greatest Ingredients the next time. Bye now.